anything without offending. So now my mouth is in the jailhouse with cases pending. First Amendment, you replaced it, rigged it, dubbed it down. It's not an option. Some of it I understand. SMT Nation, what is going on, good people? Uh, we're going to be testing the Verizon Wireless Network here today. Uh, we're going to be specifically testing the 5G Ultra Wideband. This is the C Band 3700 variation, not the millimeter wave. All right, so I wanted to make sure I laid that out there for you guys here. We're going to be testing it on a few different levels. Uh, we're going to test the on device data. All right, so this is the iPhone 13, or excuse me, iPhone 14 Pro Max. Middle of the day, we're about 2 p.m. Uh, so we're going to test to see how it's performing. It's about, um, what has it been, about four or five months since this uh, site was activated. And we'll see how it's performing, how it's holding up. And it's been pretty good for me. All right, 29 ping, 6 millisecond jitter, 379 on the downlink. And we got about 30 on the uplink. So that's on-device data on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I also want to test this. I'm going to run a second test just so you know we make sure we get a good baseline. Uh, but I want to test the... Um, I want to test not just the on device, I want to test the hotspot, right? And then I want to test it on the Pixel and see how that's holding up too. So I want to test the devices, I want to test it as Wi-Fi, I want to test the modems, the antennas, you know, just a good thorough testing here. Okay, so um, it's been good for me, guys. It's been really good. Uh, I have had very good reliability, the speeds have been great, uh, the uplink, the range, the propagation indoors, it's been really nice. All right, so we're about 2 p.m. in the afternoon. 32 ping, 3 jitter, 328 on the down, and we got into the 40s on this one, 41 up. All right, now, um, additionally, I want to go ahead and test the Pixel on device, right? Uh, and actually, you know what? Let's, let's do this first. Let me go ahead and connect the Pixel to the iPhone's hotspot, all right? So it should be on. I should just be able to go in to my Wi-Fi settings and go ahead and turn it on connect to the iPhone, and then see how it performs. All right, so right now it wants to default to my my Wi-Fi that's on my um, AT&T Fiber. Okay, so I let me see if it's on. Maybe it turned off the the iPhone's connection. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we are connected to Sneed's iPhone here. You guys will see it. Right there in the connections, Sneed's iPhone. It's got all the other Wi-Fi's here in the house. But uh, let's go ahead and get this a bit out of the way here. We'll get the iPhone off to the side. I don't want to risk any type of interference. Let's go ahead and test uh, the hotspot and tethering and the Wi-Fi here. All right, so this is kind of testing a couple of things, right? It's it's testing the antennas and the modem technologies here on the iPhone. Uh, it's also testing. The pixels, Wi-Fi, I guess you know. Uh, I think it's. Um, I think I think it's going to perform just fine. Uh, here it is. Um, we'll compare the throughput availability between the devices, but it looks good from what I could tell. Because if we go back to the original test on the iPhone, you guys will see we had three twenty-eight down and forty-one point four on the up, with a ping of thirty-two and a jitter of three. We essentially have matching jitter and ping, right? 34 ping, 4 jitter. All right, so that didn't really change. And then in terms of the throughput, the downlink actually came in a little higher, 352 down and then 25 up, so the uplink a little slower. Uh, let's go ahead and run one more test. And then I think we have a pretty good benchmark and expectation there for these, uh, these connections. So you got the on-device on the iPhone came in pretty good. And then here it is on the hotspot, and it is absolutely tremendous, as good as it was on the device. All right, so maybe we got some momentary extra throughput here. Uh, but you will see it feels like they're limiting the uplink, right? So they're not, they're not really giving you the, the full force uplink, maybe? Maybe? Uh, actually, I'm going to run the iPhone one more time just to see here. All right, let's see if that is indeed the case. Okay, there we go. We'll test the iPhone to see what we get for uplink. Because the downlink seems about the same. That doesn't seem like the trouble or the issue at all. Yeah, it says we're still connected to the iPhone on the Pixel. Hmm. Yep, 350 on the down. All right, so that's basically matching. Maybe there really isn't much of management going on here. It's essentially the same. What do we get? 20, uh, 20 megabits on the uplink, 
on the tethering and hotspot. All right, so 32 ping, 4 jitter, 350 on the down, and 27.6 on the up. The 5G Ultra Wideband connection is a very good one, folks. It really is. Uh, let me go ahead and, um, you know what? The, yeah, let's go ahead and let's test the Pixel. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the Wi-Fi. All right, let's get this out of here. All right, so Pixel on device. This is the Pixel 7 Pro. All right, so this is... Um, we're on 5G Ultra Wideband here. We'll wait for it to kick in here at the top. All right, kicked on. We'll see if it's comparable or similar to the iPhone. Seems to be. All right, so the iPhone was getting like 350 down and 27 to 40 up. Uh, this, this, looks, this looks good too. Plenty good, actually. Uh, ping's a little higher. 45 ping, 9 jitter. So those metrics a little bit higher. And then 402 on the down, 46 on the up. Wow, so actually faster right? compared to the iPhone. 350 down and 27 up. Uh, you've got noticeable improvements, faster downlink speed and uplink speed. Uh, let's go ahead and do one more test just in case. Get some consistency here. Get something dependable when it comes to you know testing. Always ping the site a second time and make sure it's real. Wow, this one is a lot less throughput. <laughs> this test, this one's got some variability. Uh, the ping time came in lower at 27 milliseconds, jitter at 7 milliseconds. This time the downlink, though, came in at 263 megabits per second. Uplink looks good still as we approach the 40 megabit mark. Oh, interesting. Wow. Okay, so there is some variability there uh, in, in very typical google pixel fashion but both are plenty good uh i just thought you guys might like this video i thought you might be into that testing the scenario here right getting a chance to compare on the device data and hotspot and tethering data um i don't know it it doesn't feel like there's much of a difference you know if you look at the connection logs if you look at the on device compared to the tethering when we put it through those scenarios it basically feels like the hotspot on 5g ultra wideband is behaving just like the ultra wide band on the on device. I would actually love to know if you guys have tested this yourself. Let me know if you have and let me know what you guys are seeing. Are you seeing similar results or are you seeing different results? Are you noticing uh, like a network management thing going on? I think this is an important test for those that have 5G ultra wide band connectivity on their phones. Uh, maybe you've got an older plan and you don't have ultra wide band on Verizon or maybe you don't have ultra wide band in your market yet. But if you were to get it, guys, this connection is by far the most unadulterated connection <laughs> on the Verizon network. Millimeter wave and uh, and the C-band, right? It's um, way different than what Verizon does. They very aggressively manage the LTE. So it's good in my market that we have so much 5G ultra wideband and C-band built out. I'm just happy to be off of those LTE channels. They're good LTE channels. There's nothing wrong with them, but they're limited. You know, and when you look at this, like, this fast.com business, it kind of reiterates the fact that you're going to be throttled. You know what I mean? Like here's your 5G speeds. Now it just kicked into 5GW and you'll see the fast.com. You're connected to Netflix servers for video, you know, and, and it's pure, true, unadulterated throughput and capacity on fast.com. All right. So we're getting like 230 on the down, 240 on the down. I'm going to go ahead and run this. Uh, for the iPhone 2, let's see what we get there on fast.com. See if it's any different. And then I'm going to I'm going to connect on the tethering. See if that's any different. We'll connect on the Wi-Fi on the Pixel. Good stuff there. Um actually, let's what am I doing? I got to do this. I got to test the fast.com. Let me get you guys going there. And I'm going to connect the phone, the Pixel, to the iPhone. All right, see, we're getting 240 megabits on the downlink, 260. Netflix servers, fast.com. All right, 290, it finished. Let's go ahead and connect this, uh, this Pixel. We're back connected onto the iPhone. Let's go ahead and hit the fast.com. This is what we got on device. Go and see what we get on the tethering. 
So if you were connecting like a mobile hotspot for your iPad or your laptop or your Chromebook or a TV, a temporary solution to like an outage on your fiber or your cable coaxial or DSL, and it's plenty good. What do you guys think of this testing? Uh, let me know what you guys, uh, how you see this, how you perceive this, right? We got good performance on device and tethering. QCI 7 Verizon, GOAT on the 5G ultra wideband connection. Plenty good, lots of throughput to go around. We're about a mile from the site, just so you guys know, and we're testing in the afternoon. Uh, comment down below, you all, the voice of the people, the SMT Nation, let your voice be heard. Like, share, and subscribe for more, and turn on that bell notification icon to never miss an upload. Links are in the description for all things going on with the channel. I'll leave you guys with some positivity, parting words as we exit the video. Every new day is an opportunity to be great. Go out there and be great. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace.